Good morning, everyone. My name is Scott Morris. I'm the Director of Business Development for GTS Gaming, and we are here with another one of our publisher to retailer webinars. Uh, I'm joined by my good friend and great partner, Eirik from Board and Dice. Um, I Hello, guys. I will not try to pronounce his last name because he has already yeah. told me that it gets slaughtered a million times from everybody in America. So, uh, <laughs> but Eric has been, um, so Board and Dice as a company have been an exclusive partner of ours uh, with GTS Distribution for several years. Uh, most of you may know them probably for Teotihuacan, which is one of their perennial evergreens. Um, they are probably also well known from the Escape Tales line uh, and many, many other games. They have done some tremendous things over the last couple of years and grown tremendously fast, which is really, really awesome. Um, in terms of the grand scope, they're actually our second largest publisher, which is really, really awesome. Um, Eirik is based in Poland, as I mentioned uh, a little bit earlier on the, the pregame show, so to speak. Um, so it's about maybe 5.30 p.m. where he is right now, and he's enjoying the, the evening by meeting with us and getting to talk with all of you. We're going to talk about two uh, very specific games that are coming up for release here, plus a few more. Um, the main two we're going to talk about are Tawan Tinsuyu, which I probably said wrong, but <laughs> we'll get it right, um, and Tekenu. Uh, Tekenu is uh, going to be coming out here shortly. Both games are available for pre-order. Uh, Tawan Tinsuyu is going to be available for uh, release around the Essen time frame. Um, but we also have a really, really, really exciting thing to talk about today, which I'm really, really happy about. And I'm not going to steal any thunder from Irik on this because this is all Gordon Dice's idea of we want to support retailers in a very special way, which I think is really cool. So I'll let him kind of unveil the curtain on that one when the, the time comes. But with that, I always like to remind everybody, everything's on the table. So any questions you have, feel free to ask. You can open your chat window on computer by just hovering over the video, clicking on the chat bubble at the bottom. And then there is a selection for all panelists, which are myself and Eric, or all panelists and attendees, which will go to all the other retailers as well. Either one is fine. Um, I do have my Facebook chat open because I know a couple of you like to hit me through Facebook chat. <laughs> <really> cool <too. laughs> um, and uh, other than that, I will turn it over to you, Eric, and let you get started on everything. Uh, if I can only ask you to turn on uh, the presentation, I have sent you. That would be awesome to share. Sure. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Let me. Uh, let me because I am connecting from the phone. Uh, my computer does not like Zoom meetings, and I gotcha. always need to connect gotcha. from the phone. So yeah. sorry nope. for that. That is not <laughs> a problem. Let me pull it up real quick, and we will get it rolling. Uh, presentation. Maybe right here, uh, um, here it is, uh, PDF version. I'm gonna pull up the PDF version, is that right? Or do you want me to pull up the PowerPoint? Awesome. Here we go. Uh, uh, PDF is okay, PDF is totally okay. Okay, let me open this up and, oh, the PDF is kind of looking a little weird. Let me, um, let me download the other one real quick. Okay. Sorry about this guys, give us one second and we will get it set up. Yeah, there's the Google Doc. Let me do that one. Um, there we go. Is this going to let me present from Google or do I have to save it? I think I have to save it. Yep. Download as Microsoft PowerPoint and it'll take two seconds and we will be good to go. Uh, there we go. There we go. All right. Enable editing and let me share my screen. This will be a first as me as a driver here. So this is we'll see how good my skills are. Um, share screen and we're going to share this. And everyone should hopefully be able to see that. <laughs> awesome. So we can even start from slide three right now because you made a very good introduction about sure. <laughs> uh, which games we will be talking about. So we are pretty good with that. <laughs> Oops, sorry. Hang on one sec there. There we go. Um, and I think that should do it. There we go. All right. There we go. Okay. So thank you for doing the introduction. I will maybe start from... Um, from uh, a beginning who we are, because probably maybe part of you, uh, ladies and gentlemen, does not know us as a board and dice, as a brand. So we want to tell you, I want to tell you shortly about um, from where we came up from. And uh, board and dice as a brand is existing on the market since uh, 2013. 
Uh, it was a smaller company uh, made by me and my friend Filip Głowacz. And uh, we were releasing the games mainly locally and we started to build um, a international brand since 20, uh, 2013. In the same time, there was uh, another company which history uh, of the which uh, which uh, the beginning of the history is since 2011, and this company was NSKN Games. Uh, Andrei Novak, uh, who is the founder of NSKN Games, also started to release the games um, uh, from the beginning in Europe and after that uh, worldwide as well. Uh, on some point, and this is uh, 2018, during our trip to the US. Uh, we have decided to try to merge and uh, from a short talk to uh, to the final decision we have uh, we have um, uh, went through the whole process and now since the beginning of 2019 as a brand we are a merged company uh, so board and dice now contains old board and dice and nskm games uh, as one so all the games from all from these two brands are right now uh, managed by let's call it new board and dice uh, what i want to show you guys is uh, basically our core core values um, and the reach we have right now uh, and how we expanded our work so uh, as you can see as a company we are putting our effort on four uh, major values. This is loyalty, growth, growth, leadership, and adventure. Uh, by loyalty, what do we mean about uh, by by this? Uh, well, loyalty towards our partners. So, in this case, in North American market, um, our loyalty to GTS and you guys as a retailers. We want to show this loyalty by building a long um, distance relationships, um, uh, partnerships. We are not focused on one-time deals. We want to support you as a retailers. Uh, we want to support you not only by releasing the games, but we want to support you on advertising them. We want to support you on getting um, some uh, special editions or special uh, dedicated only to retail and expansions like for example for Trentopia and uh, today we will we will also um, discuss uh, a special um, surprise for the retail for um, uh, in in North America as well growth uh, of course as any uh, as every brand we are thinking about growing our brand as well but by growth we mean also growing our hobby uh, and this is uh, the activity we want to do in the, uh, independently um, from our brand. That means that we are trying to get to our industry more and more people by, uh, um, by looking at the games a little bit wider. Right now we are also talking about uh, with some uh, localization and license, uh, license partners um, to get some maybe video gamers also to our industry and give you a chance to work with um, a bigger IP. Uh, so by growth, we, we want also you to grow, guys, because uh, in the whole uh, distribution chain, in the whole uh, industry and uh, based on the relations we are working together with, uh, we know that if we won't put any effort effort um, and uh, we won't give the opportunities for our partners to grow we won't have uh, a chance to grow uh, like a brand uh, leadership uh, well um, this is something we want to show by a positive change support uh, especially in this uh, in this hard times right now uh, we think that innovations in in the games in the testing area supporting our uh, employees, supporting our partners, uh, even uh, doing something more for uh, our partners is something uh, how uh, is the approach how the companies should work right now uh, to show that these hard times, if we will stick together, uh, we can survive these hard times and we can support each other uh, pretty well. And adventure, 
and com uh, compliant themes, uh, exciting mechanisms, uh, this uh, T uh, name, uh, T named games with hard to pronounce um, titles. This is something what we want to. Uh, we want to give also you a chance, um, the retailers, to uh, have something unique also on your shelves and have something unique, unique in the ton, tons of, of games which uh, can be found right now on the market. So I think this is a, a good approach uh, to, to take our customers and the gamers for a good adventure. And this is something what we want to do. I am super excited about one thing we have started right now uh, about the IP we are talking about, but I really cannot tell you more right now, but if we will do it, it will, it will be really huge. And this is also an adventure for us as a uh, geeks uh, in, the, uh, in the company. Uh, uh, I'm, for example, also a video gamer and I love video games and when i have this kind of opportunity i am like thrilled and uh, very excited so this is this is why this adventure is something what needs to be find uh, find here as a uh, core value in our um uh, in our business uh, yeah, the just, second to, just to interject there uh if anyone really wants to know how deep it goes with iric Eric and i are both <laughs> really big fans of the witcher uh and the original books and the series uh, don't ever question his geekdom or his geek card because he's got a metal sword that is hanging in his office that he knows how to use. So it's really good stuff. Actually, I uh, played The Witcher 3, uh, the video game, uh, like five times right now uh, with all the DLCs, with mastering uh, the game. I have read the books uh, through all my life like 10 times, the whole, uh, the whole series. So yeah, I am I am crazy on that point. <laughs> I really love this IP. So this is this is something uh, basically what changed my life when I was a teenager and I started to uh, read the fantasy books. This is something what hooks me up to the um, uh, to the pop culture uh, and to the fantasy themes. And I guess without The Witcher, I I would not be the same person as I am right now. So yeah, this is why. <laughs> and yeah, the sword. Well, I'm even looking at it right now. <laughs> My dream is to collect all the, uh, all the swords so you can find in the video game, but I think my wife would kill me. Uh, literally, she would kill me. <laughs> okay, guys. So the next thing I want to show you is how merchandise ex is expanding right now. So the, uh, the, the reach right now. So right now we are working on almost all known for us board game markets. So whole Europe, Russia, Chinese market, Asian market, Australia, New, um, Australia, New Zealand, Oceania, um, South and North America. And of course in North America, we are exclusively working with GTS since uh, the beginning of 2018. Correct me if I'm wrong, uh, Scott, because this was with um, in between, this yep. was the beginning of our cooperation and from uh, Gamma 2018, uh, I can remember that we met each other with Barry, with Barry uh, in 2017. This was Gen Con, and we established the cooperation all together, and we started uh, since uh, the beginning of 2018. Uh, so as you can see, uh, this shows that we are not orientated only on the one market. We are trying to... Uh, make our business uh, diversified uh, to make it a little bit safer for all the markets we are supporting. That means that even in the coronavirus um, situation right now, we are pretty good uh, on several markets. We are selling a lot of copies right now in Asian markets, in the US and in Europe as well. And that shows that by stable growth, we can support our uh, our uh, customers um, in a loyal way, in a bit different way as well. So this will be the adventure and some kind of creative thing um, uh, we want to do um, uh, as a relation to our, to our values. Uh, Scott, if you can uh, go to another slide. Uh, as an answer also to COVID-19 and how it affects us, 
uh, of course, we needed to change some of our plans. I mean here um, our uh, spendings, uh, what we wanted to invest in. So uh, we needed to um, rebuild our cash flow. But in final, we did not need to change any release dates. So what we showed you guys in February, in February uh, during, our, uh, during our webinar here, uh, this does, does not change. So as you can see on the slides, uh, we will release the canoe in July. So this is the GenCon date. So um, the, at the beginning, we have planned to release the games on the conventions. So uh, the street dates should be GenCon and for uh, Tawantin Suyu and uh, for um, uh, Escape Tales 3, Children of Wormwood, we, we were planning to do that for Spiel 2020. Uh, we can't because these uh, events will, will not happen, but in the same time, we are producing the games. Some of them are already on boats. So uh, we won't be late with delivering the games to you guys. What more? Uh, what we did with Traintopia, we have managed to release the games uh, significantly earlier uh, for all the retailers who did the pre-orders with GTS and with our European partners as well. So this is something what we always want to do. Uh, we want to support you guys um, to have the games earlier, uh, if possible, with, kind, with some kind of additional exclusive promos, as like for Traintopia, uh, to give you a, a heads up and to give you a chance to be first as well with your local customers. Um, so I, I cannot stress how amazing and important that that is given the time frame that we're in right now because with my role as kind of a partner manager for a lot of our publishers i literally someone could say here's a briefcase with a billion dollars tell me like five publishers that have not been affected by covid and had their, their schedules changed i could not do it i mean it's it's extremely extremely rare right now almost every publisher we're working with whether it's US based or international based are running into some type of delays with either manufacturing or, or shipping or anything like that. So I, I cannot stress how amazing and awesome it is that amidst all of this craziness that, that board and dice has been able to keep not just one game, but several games on schedule, which is really cool. I can even tell you right now that we already finished some work on the games, which will be coming in 2021. Uh, what more? Uh, I probably shouldn't tell you that yet, but well, if you are today with us, I can tell you that we will release the expansion, the third expansion to Teotihuacan, uh, and the date will be for uh, Gamma 2021. The files are already uh, prepared um, and we will send them very soon to uh, our factory. So it's, it's going good. We are on the, on the proper and on the correct and the cor uh, and, and on the correct uh, path right now, uh, as you can see also for Teotihuacan Shadow of Chitle, we are already reprinting the expansion because uh, the interest about it, uh, uh, the interest for it, and how many copies we uh, together were uh, able to sell to the final customers uh, is huge, and we have decided to do a reprint of this expansion and it will be available in the same time through GTS as Tekken. So, um, uh, Janko, so July the 30th, you will be able also to get um, Shadow of Shitle. Uh, and this is something what we are also super excited for. Um, and uh, basically that's it. If we are talking about the dates, uh, so uh, we can move, um, um, we can move uh, forward and let's go with Traintopia. Uh, right now, the game is already uh, available through GTS. Uh, it's, do it's doing a really nice job right now. What I can tell you, we are trying to support you as much as we can. And uh, you can see here on the cover some stamps from the reviewers right now. So we are supporting the game. Uh, as well right now we are sending as many copies as we can to reviewers to make a hype around the game and give you also a chance to 
um, to advertise it in a proper way to, to the customers. Uh, why this game is a good pick? It's a family-friendly, presented uh, game with a lot of tiles. Of course, it's about trains uh, and um, tile lane game with fan train team and complete experience in 45 minutes. This is also very important because this is, I would call it, um, uh, a strategic game because it's family orientated, but it gives you a, a good entry to a strategic games. Uh, it's not too heavy. It's not too light. It's not too light. So you can uh, play it uh, with your kids. My nine-year-old uh, loves the, loves the, this one. Uh, and in the same time, you can play it as uh, in a brainy way with your uh, with with heavy gamers uh, with with heavy game fans as well. So uh, I think it's a good intro. It's a good pick. Uh, I also think that um, uh, pretty soon we will have uh, a large number of um, of localizations. We are talking right now with a huge partner from Germany uh, about doing some kind of um, localization in several markets. Um, and the feedback we have from the uh, from the reviewers is very very positive. Uh, so. Um, right now, we have also uh, a, an exclusive promos uh, for, for you guys. It's also available in GTS. We are not selling these. They are only available for retailers. So this is um, a way we want to also praise you guys um, and give you a chance to have something unique uh, for the game uh, and for your uh, direct customers. Uh, okay, we can move to another uh, slide, Scott, and I guess this is something what uh, a lot of people uh, is waiting for this year, and I am talking about Tekenu. Uh, Tekenu is a game which we planned last year, uh, and uh, we knew that it can be really, really good seller. Um, Right now, you can find the first review available uh, in the internet, like the official one, uh, and it's from um, uh, Tom from uh, uh, Dice Tower. And um, also, you can find we were we were sending some sneak peeks from from the game uh, since Gamma 2020 because this is well the only convention I I will, I managed to reach um, the US for, <laughs> and it was a chance to show the game with, with my pal Rainer um, a few times um, to Ella and Stella, for example, and they love the games as well from uh, also Eddie from Heavy Cardboard. Um, why this game is a good pick? Uh, well, this is uh, the, another game from T-Line. So Daniele Toshini uh, made another great game. Uh, this time with uh, with cooperation with David Turci, so another um, big and good name from our uh, from our industry. Uh, they are very rec recognizable. Uh, they are very rec recognized and appreciated designers in the world. Right now, uh, we are working close also with David on on some another projects. But this game, I think, it can be even better than Teotihuacan. Uh, in my personal, uh, in my personal uh, opinion, I like this game more than Tio. Um, what more, this game has a phenomenal price uh, and interest from reviewers and board game community right now. I can tell you that before the release, we have the interest and the followers on B uh, on BGG uh, in the number bigger than right now with Tio Tiwakan. So that shows how this game can, uh, how, how um, big potential uh, is uh, behind this game uh, and uh, what can it do uh, even now. I can uh, also tell you that we are doing some um, pre-orders pre uh, right now for, uh, for business uh, partners. And I'm pretty sure we will be doing some allocations for the European distributors because the interest is really huge. And well, we cannot increase the number of copies which are already on the way. 
but I can assure you that, and I think Scott will uh, will um, approve what I am saying, that all the pre-orders which will be sent to GTS uh, by uh, North American pre uh, retailers are safe and um, don't need to be allocated. What more, we will do our best to deliver you the games like with um, uh, Traintopia significantly earlier so you will be ready guys before the street date uh, and you will have the games in your um, in your stores. Um, a quick note, more? if anyone is uh, seeing the names, Daniel Tashini and David Zerksi and, and thinking, I know those, like they're ringing a bell, like where, where are they from? Um, those guys have been behind some of the, the best and biggest like Euro games in the market. They're responsible for Anachrony, for Dice Settlers, for Zolkin, games that have done extremely well and, and continue to kind of keep doing well. So uh, obviously Teotihuacan as well, which we've talked about. Um, and, you know, this, I've had a chance to play this game, even though we haven't been to shows, uh, which is usually one of the more fun things of my life is being able to go to shows and actually sit down with Irek and Philip as partner and play the games. Um, but we've been able to play them through digitally through Tabletopia. Um, and this is a game that when I played it on Tabletopia, the very first thing I said to myself was, I can't wait to get the physical copy of this in my hands because the very unique sundial mechanic that's in the game based on the obelisk is really very interesting. And it's one of those things that like when you see it on the board, you're like, what's happening here? I need to know what is going on. Like you have this giant obelisk in the middle of this game board and all these dice and everything. And it's just really, really, really cool, really, really fun game. And uh, I, I agree with Irik in terms of my, my personal play style. I love Teotihuacan. I think it's a phenomenal game. Um, I like Tekenu and I think, I, I think I may even get Tekenu to the table a little bit more than Teotihuacan, which would be pretty, pretty cool. I have the same feeling and I really think that this game has all elements which are praised by uh, the gamers uh, in Tio, in Trismegistus, uh, and in, in, in the games from Daniele Tashini um, uh, lines. So I really think that this is the very best, the smoothest, and um, uh, the best prepared design from, from Daniela right now. And I really think that we are in a good way uh, to, to deliver you uh, an excellent product, guys. So I really think that this is something that can, can really hit the market. Uh, I know that Rainer is with us. Um, he told me that he has joined uh, the presentation. Rainer, are you with us? I am. Hello, my friend. <laughs> and, and one thing that, that is, I think is um, worth mentioning as well is, so, so despite the fact that normally this this time of year we would have been um, traveling to different conventions, we would have been um, doing different things with reviewers and and content creators. Um, we we've still been able to do a tremendous amount of uh, of pre-release marketing for the game, doing a lot of of demos and and so forth with both uh, bloggers and and vloggers and and other. Um, media people in the in the industry to help um, build the interest for the game and and it's it's something that has been going on since uh just before uh, gamma it has it continued at gamma and even after then especially using digital platforms that scott was talking about as well and um it, it has been tremendously successful and it's also been one of those things that uh, oftentimes after after we have done a demo with uh, with a, a, a media person, for example, usually they request to be able to have that link so that they can also share it with others, which is really unusual, actually, that, that you will have people who, who request to basically help market and, and help build interest for, for games uh, like this. So it's, it just goes to show that, that the efforts despite uh, the current situation uh, with the coronavirus uh, worldwide, we've still been able to, to do probably even more than we would have been able to do uh, before because we haven't been limited to, to just convention goers, but been able to, to do this in a way that has had a greater reach than normal. And we will continue that uh, up, up until the release date to make sure that we build as much of the, the marketing push for this as possible.
Yes, in the in the uh, in the nearest future, we have planned uh, a big um, marketing campaign around Tekanu, of course, and also um, in the upcoming events. Um, uh, I mean, here the digital ones. We will be showing the game as well. And what is I think uh, also important, we will uh, we will release the Tabletopia demo day uh, around Tekanu as well. So um, we will try to do as much as possible to show the game to the final customer, so you, your customers, guys, um, uh, even though we cannot be physically um, uh, on, the, on, the phys uh, on the convention. So we will do our best to support you in the marketing here, uh, and I hope uh, it will um, do a great job for you guys. So I think we can, uh, we can go to another game, right? So uh, Tawantins to you. Uh, I still pronounce it wrongly. Uh, Rainer is uh, is pushing us here in the company to do it properly. So maybe I will give you the floor, Rainer, and uh, you will show us how to do that. <laughs> sure. Uh, so this is uh, Tawantin Suyu, which is it's basically the Quechua um, word for uh, what, what basically what what the Incas called their their empire. It means the four regions in the Quechua language. Um, and this is uh, the second uh, of these medium heavy uh, Euro games uh, that we are releasing this year. And this one is scheduled for release in October. Uh, and it's also one that alongside Tekeno, we have been uh, showing off uh, on digital platforms, been doing demos for it. Um, and again, we will be continuing this um, and ramp that up as well, uh, the closer we get to the, to the release date. Um, one of the things, uh, so again, this is this is a David Turtsey design. Um, so so again, having his name attached to it uh, is is definitely something he's he's like uh, Irek was saying earlier. Uh, he's a well known and beloved uh, designer. Um, the other thing that is interesting is that this was really a also an homage to uh, to previous games and specifically Teotihuacan. Uh, David Turtsy, we work closely with him. Um, he has designed the solo modes for several of our previous games. Um, and, and of course, uh, co-designed Tekena with Daniela Tassini. Um, so this, there, there are a lot of things, people that, that have played <laughs> and loved Teotihuacan will recognize a few aspects um, that, that were kind of put into this game as an, as an homage to, to those games, which also means that it's going to fit very well in this line of, uh, of these games with Teotihuacan, Tekeno, and Tawantin Suyu. Um, in this case, this is a worker placement game. Um, and one thing that is a little bit uh, unique in this one is that most of the time a worker placement game has these ebbs and flows where you place your worker, there will be a phase where you remove the workers, you replace workers again, uh, trying to get to slots that, that maybe you were not able to get to previously. This one is a bit different in that um, the, the workers actually, for the most part, uh, once you place them on the board, they're, they're permanently there. So they don't, they don't get taken off uh, from the board. That means that as the game goes on, more and more slots and especially specific actions that you get access to uh, will start to, to close off. Um, and, and this, uh, the, the way that it handles uh, both the aspects of worker placement, there's a bit of area majority uh, related to, to the thematic uh, implementation of uh, the four regions that the Incas uh, spread out uh, in, in conquest to. Uh, and there's a bit of resource management where the resources that you have are very valuable and you have to carefully think about how you can spend them. And at the same time, you have a lot of options, a lot of freedom in the actions you take, in, in how you spend your resources and so forth. So there's, there's a lot of room for, for people to not be constrained by the mechanisms but rather use the mechanisms of worker placement and the resource management and, and all the different aspects where you can uh, score the victory points in a way that will be uh, very appealing. Um, it's, it's a, it, there was a, a review by um, David Waybright from Man vs. Meeple, and he was specifically talking about that, that it's, it's a game that even though it can be, there, there's a lot of things to, to think about. It's, it's, uh, it, it's there's a bit of a, of a brain burn in it and, and there can be times when you have to very carefully think about the actions that you're taking but he said that the, the game never feels long it, it it's it's so engaging you're so involved in everything and always a, a very enjoyable uh, time playing it 
Um, so this this one should also fit uh, very well uh, into the in the same line, uh, especially on the heels of Teotihuacan, and with the the interest that has built up for Tukeno. Tawantin Suyo has also been doing really well. Uh, it, it's still earlier in that process because it has a later uh, release date, but already some of the the early marketing efforts and and so forth have very good indicators that this is also a game that is going to do uh, really well. Um, and again, this one uh, this one has the same uh, retail price, sixty dollars uh, as Takenu, uh, and um, a lot of the things uh, when it comes to the to the theme and and so forth. Um, are, are ones that, that are engaging, right? It's not just uh, something where you're, you're just playing with the, the mechanisms, but you do get to explore a little bit uh, some of the aspects of, of how you, you build your engine and how you collect your resources and so forth in a way that is, that is really rewarding. Um, and again, this one is one that we are uh, focusing on uh, different efforts right now to do marketing for. Uh, there's a, a virtual gaming con that is going on this week, and Tawantin Suyu is one of those that we will be uh, showing off live there as well as to Ken. Um, just to jump I in can... real quick, we've had a couple of questions come through, and I just want to kind of roll through them here real quick. Yep. Um, first one was, uh, are these part of the demo program? And the quick answer to that is yes, Board and Dice is part of our demo program, so you can contact us or contact your sales rep to get demo copies of the base games. So again, only base games, not expansions. Um, Talents Into You is a phenomenal game to have on display, as is Tekenu, too. The obelisk in Tekenu is extremely, extremely eye-catching, even more so. Um, when I played this game for the first time, I remember telling Rainer and Eirik that it reminded me of one of my wife's favorite games, which is Five Tribes but not in the sense of how it plays, in the sense of how it looks. Because when you look at the board and you see the kind of the gameplay area and all the different color workers, it's a very colorful experience. It's a very bright experience. And it's one of those things that you look at and go, I really want to know more about what's happening in this game. And that was the same impression I got with Five Tribes several years ago when that came out. And of course we know all know that that was a very, very successful game. Um, but this operates in a way, similarly, because as Rainer was saying, the different workers have different colors and they have different abilities based on their colors, which is kind of a, a small tie back to it. But the strategy element in this game versus the Mancala element in Five Tribes, this is really like a, a Euro gamer's dream in terms of how to place things, what the interaction is, what the connection is between the color and the placement and the resources. It, it, very rarely, and, and people know me if you if you watch the series, I love worker placement games. It's my favorite genre of, of any type of game. And very, very rarely do you get the feeling walking away from a worker placement game saying, wow, that's unique, or wow, that's different. You usually walk away feeling, oh, it kind of reminded me of this, or it kind of reminded me of that. And when I played Tom and Tinsu for the first time, the very first thing I said was, man, this is super unique. So that was, th this will be a game that, you know, whether you're actually doing a demo or whether you're just putting it on display, it's going to be a great game from a physical standpoint to have people look at it and see it and want to pick it up and want to play with it, which is really good. Um, well, more, it is very replayable because of the temple, which can be moved um, yes. in a bit different position every time. So yes. you can have an access to a different uh, different actions. Uh, so yeah, it's it, it, the the value of replayability is is very high. I yes. want to also add that in the same time, while we will be releasing the English uh, language version, we will be also releasing for both games uh, multiple uh, other language editions. So we will have Spanish one. We will have uh, Chinese, Korean. We will have German version. We will have Italian version as well. Uh, so uh, I really hope that this whole effort and what we are doing for both of them will also, in, in final, will also help you guys to, uh, to, to have this game as a recognizable product on your shelves. Sure. I, I should also mention in, in connection with that, uh, so the last, uh, this, this last week, I've actually been doing uh, demos also with international uh, reviewers and in, in media. So uh, one of the more um, 
well-known ones in Argentina, for example, who, all, who does a lot of um, reviews and, and does a lot of content for uh, Maldito Games, uh, been showing this off. So, so even though right now we're obviously talking about uh, specifically uh, North American uh, market and the English release, uh, but obviously these these efforts are are reaching out um, to to the international market as well so um. yes because this is also an uh, an element of our policy um, I can remember times when um, especially um, companies from Europe were releasing the games firstly in Europe and after a few months the games were available in the US uh, or in the whole North American market uh, right now, our our policy is very straight. Uh, international release means worldwide release. So uh, the street date is exactly the same uh, for for the whole world, uh, and this also gives uh, an additional opportunities to um, North American retailers because uh, you don't need to wait for the games and and this is uh, even sometimes uh, you guys have the games uh, slightly earlier because the vessels to Europe uh, are coming uh, a little bit longer <laughs> yeah and that's that's an important thing too because uh, we hear it a lot when we get towards the Essen time frame um, you know oh this game's coming out at Essen when's it coming out in America and there is always a risk factor for retailers um, with games that are S and games, you know, quote unquote, um, that people may be driven to buy direct or buy through uh, kind of a broker who's bringing games back from S if they can't go to S So being able to have a worldwide release date, especially for something at S is really, really important. Um, and I think it helps from a retail perspective, it helps protect you guys as retailers to know that you know, you're getting a game at the same time the rest of the market is getting the game. So if you have consumers that are you know, savvy and you know, go online and look for international releases, you don't have to worry about that. You can, you can direct them to pre-order in your store knowing that they're gonna get the game the same time frame that you know, the rest of the world's gonna get the time frame, which is pretty important. And quite frankly, Board and Dice has done this now for the entire time that we've been together in terms of partnership. 2018, 2019, and now 2020. Um, again, it's pretty hard to nail down and say, give me five publishers that have released their games both at Essen and worldwide at the same time. It's, it's pretty rare. <laughs> it's, it's pretty rare. We are doing our best here. <laughs> um, there was a quick question. I, I typed it in chat. I just want to make sure that he knows that I'm listening and then I heard it. Um, Julio and uh, Antelon had asked a question about Latin America. Um, and he said that he loves TO and he hopes that he can get it soon. Um, we do cover all of North America for uh, Board and Dice, Julio. So uh, just shoot me a note and let me know what region you're in, where you're at. And, you know, if, we, if we're not already in that region, then we can talk with Board and Dice to make sure that we can help you out with it. Because that's exactly. definitely, these are games that would definitely do well for you, I'm sure, there. Uh, if you are looking uh, straightly for, for example, Portuguese releases, uh, we have a partners uh, in Brazil which will release the games, but this will be slightly later because we have closed the deals uh, one month ago and they are preparing right, right now the files and the games in Portuguese should be released in Q1 in 2021. I think Julio usually is looking for English copies of the game, but that's definitely good to know. So, Cool. Awesome. Ready to move on to the next slide? Yes, we do. All right. And this is something what uh, I think this is, is exciting the most stuff. exciting thing. <laughs> so Rainer, please proceed with this one. <laughs> sure. So uh, one of the things that we um th that we want to focus on a lot is is efforts that that we can do to show our loyalty towards you. Uh, one of the things that we we just briefly discussed about having global release dates is something that we care very deeply about. We want to make sure that when we set the plan for when these games should release, that we put enough of a cushion in there so that we can absorb anything that, that comes up, anything that is, um, that is happening so that we can stick to those release dates and so that we are working closely with, with partners to, uh, to allow for, for this to happen. But we also realized that the last uh, couple months have been very difficult uh, for all of you. Uh, and so one of the things that we wanted to do is to directly uh, respond to those challenges that you may have 
experienced as a retailer. So in, in uh, kind of response to, to the, the hardships lately, whatever that may be, um, whether that is because of the coronavirus or if you are in areas where, uh, especially lately with, uh, with protests and, and riots and so forth, anyone who has been affected by this, this is a way for us to, to show uh, things that we can do uh, to help you and to, to show our support for you and for your business. So what we want to do is we want to, to give you for free uh, bundles uh, of uh, family weight and light strategy games. So the, the ones that are here on, uh, on display on this, on this slide right now are the games that you'll be able to, to get. Again, you can request this uh, through your sales rep uh, talk to, to GTS about it, and you'll be able to get these uh, sent to you, um, and, and, and there will be no, no cost for you uh, for these ones. Um, some of these uh, are uh, games that, that have come out previously, Dust in the Wings, Inuit, and World Shapers, but we are also adding uh, our most recent release, Traintopia, which has been doing really well for us, and which is one that we have been put a lot of marketing effort in, in the spring uh, behind it, and are continuing to, to show off and, and build. And we want to make sure that you can, uh, can have these um, and, and be able to, as a, as a no risk uh, option, be able to do whatever uh, suits best for you uh, and your business. Uh, and it's a way for us to, to show our uh, support for you. Uh, I should also mention in, uh, when it comes to the Traintopia, um, game that there are still uh, retail exclusive uh, promo tiles available and uh, so you can request those uh, as well as long as as those last so that's something that we we started uh, giving these out at gamma and uh, we also um, sent these packs to gts so that they would be able to have those to send out with with pre-orders but those you can also get um, through this through this deal yeah, this is this is a phenomenal offer, in my opinion. I want to I want to thank Board and Dice for helping to put it together and and show pretty massive support for for a retail community. Um, you know, we we did have another publisher do something very similar recently, um, but nowhere near as as much of an SRP value in terms of the games. Um, you know, Inuit, Dust in the Wings, Traintopia, they're all $39.99 games. World Shapers is $24.99. It's a little smaller. Uh, but these are great games that are both appropriately priced for the kind of the climate of the U.S. market right now. Um, we hear a lot of feedback from retailers who are telling us that, you know, $40 and less, $40 and less, like that's what I'm able to move right now. That's what I'm able to really focus on right now. And then on top of that, like Rainer had said, these are family weight games. All of these are games that you could sit down and play with your buddies over a strategy night or with your family and with your kids and with your grandma. I, I always say, you know, if you can teach your grandkids and you can teach your grandma, it's a great family game. Um, and all of these kind of fit that, that mode. Um, and a lot of these, as you can see, the artwork is very catching, um, especially Dust in the Wings and Inuit. Um, and the final thing that I just want to say, and I think that this is a phenomenal thing to know, is that um, there is a, a forward in Inuit um, that talks about the connection with uh, Inuit history and being respectful to that culture. Board and Dice, being a very diverse, being a, a very multicultural company, does a tremendous job whenever they're working on these games that have to deal with cultures that are maybe not their own, but are you know very well known and famous. They do a really, really good job of being respectful and classy and, and portraying everything in a very positive light. So this is just a phenomenal way to support retailers. Um, just so everyone knows, so we've been working with Board and Dice to kind of put these together. We're gonna have these available to ship out beginning on July 1st. Um, it'll go all the way through the end of July, July 31st. So if you can't jump on, you know, the train, pardon the pun, Traintopia first, uh, you can get that <laughs> later on in July. Um, but basically from July 1st to July 31st, we will have a bundle SKU that'll be set up just for these games. It'll be a zero cost, zero price SKU to you guys. You'll be able to get them. There's no minimum order. It's not like you need to order like five copies of a game to be able to get these. This is literally just board and dice saying we want to thank you and we want to you know show support for the retailers that have showed them support which i think is phenomenal so thank you guys yeah for sure and, and we also um like, like scott was saying there's no there's no minimum or, or any 
specifics uh, tied to this other than if if you think that this could that you could use these games for your store and to what whatever that form might be right uh it, whatever you think you know your customers you know your market however this can help you uh please please take advantage of this and and know that it's it's there for you to to use as you see fit uh and and hopefully this will then also be, be a way for you to to then help uh, if if nothing else, help uh, generate more business uh, for you and, and for your store. Whether that's in in connection with our brand or or just in general, being able to uh, to attract more customers to your store. Awesome. All right, uh, I think we have one more slide. Is that right? Uh, this is Q and A. So if yep. anyone has uh, any question to ask, we are here for you guys and to answer all. Uh, all questions. Yep. So um, there was a couple of questions. So uh, Julio did get back to me. So it was Guatemala. So we can definitely make sure to help you out with that. Julio, I did put my email into chat as well. Um, it's just S Morris, M O R R I S, at gtsdistribution.com. Um, feel free to shoot me a note. We can get you connected with sales rep, make sure we get everything lined up for that. Um, uh, I'm probably will mispronounce this, but I think it's Mario Angela. Uh, from uh, Mexico. He says, greetings from Mexico. I'm having a hard time getting B&D games. Hopefully GTS would offer them to Latin America since GTS has North America exclusive. Yes. So yeah, North America is North America. So <laughs> we try to cover everything we can. Um, we do not have a, like a sub distribution partner or anybody, you know, that is separate in, in Latin America. So that's something that we would help you with directly. Um, if you have an account, uh, Mariangela, feel free to email me, let me know, and I can get with the sales rep. If you don't have an account and you're not a GTS customer, also email me and I can get you all the information on how you can, you know, start the process of being onboarded as a retailer for everything. But, yeah, they are, they are great games, you know, and, and, and many more than, you know, what we've talked about here too. You know, the Escape Tales line is now working on its third game. They, they have low memory and they have Awakening from before that. Uh, we talked a little bit about In Between, which was the kind of first game in 2018, which literally was pretty much Stranger Things board game. Um, even though they, they, the, the board and dice guys can't say that, I'll say that. It was literally that, what that was. Um, but yeah, really, really great line and, and very much focused on what we've talked about a lot on this series of calls, which is brand first, game second, right? Board and Dice has done a tremendous job building their brand, both from a gaming company perspective, also from a marketing perspective as well, because um, Philip, who's not on the call, who is their head of marketing, does just an absolutely phenomenal job. If you are on any of the social media channels, I'm sure you've seen them. They're they're funny, they're creative, they're, they're very witty in terms of like, you know, current events and what's going on and, you know, things that people are talking about globally rather than just, you know, locally, which is really, really cool. So really, really good stuff overall, all the way around. So um, I don't think that I missed any other questions. Uh, I think we covered all the questions that were available here, but I do just want to take a second and kind of rewind and make sure everyone is on board for, for what we talked about today. Uh, so Takenu is releasing in July and uh, is actually, as we speak, on a boat to us right now. Um, that is available for pre-order right now, as is Taban Tinsuyu. That is available for pre-order and it's going to come out around the Essen time frame. There was a question that was asked in Q&A by Chris Cobb about the Escape Tales 3, the Children of the Wormwoods. That is not set up in the system yet, but it is going to be set up here very shortly. Um, in fact, Eric and I just talked about it yesterday. Um, exactly. So and I can also send a follow up on this. The games will be available in the US in the, exactly the same time as Tom and to you, but Perfect. we didn't uh, want to add it to this webinar yet because sure. uh, I will ask Scott to do another one pretty soon about the Escape Tales line and about Escape Tales 3. Uh, so hope to hear you soon, guys, and, and to um, give you a um, sneak peek about um, Escape Days Children of Wormwood because the game changed uh, a lot. It's even bigger and has more mechanisms, so I hope uh, we will be able to chat about it pretty soon. Yeah, no, it's good stuff. So, But it's just good to know from a retail perspective that is getting set up, so it will be available for pre-order here pretty shortly. So. 
Um, awesome. I think that covers everything, guys. Um, gentlemen, Eric, Rainer, thank you very, very much for joining. Really do appreciate the time, especially Eric being later in the evening. I mean, it's, uh, as we joke in America, we say it's beer clock usually, right? So it's, <laughs> it's after hours for you. I really appreciate you taking the time to come join us. Um, and retailers. Thank you for thank creating this opportunity. I'm always very excited when, when I can meet you guys and, and talk about our company and our games. Sure. Now, one last question um, for retailers that want to reach out to you guys, have any questions or just want to follow up. What's the best email for them to contact you at? Do you want them to contact you directly or do you want them to go through like a, you know, info app? You can something? always contact me directly. It's uh, irekbortendice.com. Uh, uh, I will answer all the questions. Also, if you need any additional information uh, or data like media kits, some kind of graphics we have, uh, I am always sharing these with you guys. So please feel free to contact me and I am uh, more than happy to support you. Awesome. Excellent. Well, thank you again. Retailers, thank you. Uh, again, apologize for the last, like, you know, maybe a five minute start there, the late start, but we got off to a good one. And I really hope that this is not just good information about the games that are going to be available here for pre order, but it's good information about the support package, the retailer support package of the free games. And uh, I hope that that's something that all of you can take advantage of, whether you use them as demo games in your store or display games in your store, or you just get them and, and sell them and make a really good profit off of them. I think that that is a great opportunity uh, offered by a publisher and a, and a very unique opportunity. So again, thank you Board and Dice for helping support the retailers that way. And retailers, let your, your reps know. Feel free to reach out to me and contact me anytime you want. I'm happy to always talk. Um, but so we, until we talk next, I guess, thank you so much. Have a wonderful thank week in the stores. Much. We'll talk to you soon.